So ask me the question. How is voting immoral? Wonderful question. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask you three simple questions, and we're going to talk about the hidden bias behind voting and the state. Okay. In your day-to-day -day lives, do you use violence to solve problems? Okay. And the second question would be, with the exception of self-defense of yourself and others, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence until the people? Right? I mean, self-defense is not violence. That's self-preservation. You have a right, right to protect right. yourself. Property rights begins with self-ownership, owning our body and our actions. Being belligerent towards someone else's purpose Right. Like, if you start it, yeah. well, I'll end it, sort of thing, right? Right. And to, and to say both, and help other people who can defend themselves as well, right? And violence is defined as uh, placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice, i.e. rape, murder, theft, assault, you know? So the third question is, would you consider it wrong and more to violently force their ideas onto other people? No. <laughs> I'm talking about freedom. <laughs> right, we, we, instead of persuasion, right? The other, yeah, if you have a good idea, you don't need to force people to follow that idea, right? right. If it's a good idea, people will adopt it, support it, help you along with it, and say, hey, give you a thumbs up or press like on Facebook, right? Um, so there's non-violent ways to actually to, uh, to talk about our ideas to other people, right? All right, so great. So in your day-to-day -day lives, you have a plurality of non-violent solutions that you apply and use, right? And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, you also want to solve problems too. So, but unfortunately, the, the, the government, the state says, the only way we can solve problems here is to vote. So people vote with their ideas to solving problems. And in fact, the likes of politician, a politician, their only job is to legislate those ideas to laws. And those laws and ideas are backed and enforced by the police. Right? Take marijuana laws, for example. Someone who smokes a piece of plant, right? Uh, they're kidnapped, arrested, right? they're caged, in prison. If there's any point of refusal, if there's any point of resist, or you're not agree with those ideas, or something shot, murder, right? If they resist, or they try to escape, right? This is a system that only knows how to solve problems in one way, and that's their violence. Because it's even funded to more violence. There's no point you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Right? You have no choice. You have to give your money. You have to give your money. If you did have a freedom of choice, they wouldn't threaten you with the cage if you didn't pay your taxes, right? If they could send Wesley Snipes to jail for not paying his taxes, they could certainly send anyone else to jail, right? Uh, and with all those little, you know, loopholes and laws and all this stuff and taxes, there's always somebody here that's, you know, that hasn't properly followed their taxes. It's interesting. So that's, so that's it. That's the hidden violence behind voting. That's the hidden violence behind the state, right? And so I'm really just out here to talk about this sort of stuff, to talk about what we can do, right? To turn away from the state. To, to turn away from that we, which we don't do in our day-to-day -day life. We don't use violence. And to recognize the system, the matrix, only knows how to solve problems the one way, and that's violence, right? So the solution would be to turn away from the state and let's turn to ourselves, right? Change doesn't start in the White House in D.C. It doesn't start overseas. It starts with ourselves first, right? To say to ourselves, you know, enough is enough. Violence is with me, right? And it starts at home. It starts in our community. It encourages other people to start talking about freedom, right? It encourages other people to, to talk about the problems we have in our society um, and to unite our community serve values for equality, for freedom, for, for non-violence, right? That's the best self-defense anyone can have, right? Against anyone who will be aggressor, right? Because we all are united, right? We're finally our community of people who actually do care about each other, you know? Uh, so that's that's what uh, Liberate RVA is about. It's a freedom movement. It's a freedom movement from the idea that violence will set us free. And that's a state violence. <laughs> yeah. That's your car over there? Uh, yeah, you saw, <laughs> you saw my car. We were, I asked, I said, that's, that's vague, what are we liberating? Liberate our being. <laughs> okay. Liberate our community from the idea that violence will set us free. And not just state violence, but the violence we do to each other, like domestic abuse, the violence we do to children, right? Um, all violence, and go all the distance, go all the way, with no exceptions. Violence begets more violence, right? And uh, so that's, that's what this is about, right? It's a freedom movement that can take place anywhere, um, at, a, at a sidewalk, at a, at a cafe, at a diner, right? It can take place wherever you are, right? Even in the privacy of your own home. The state can never stop you and I from just simply talking to each other, right? They can stop us if you set up camp in a park. They can stop us if you sit on those capital steps. They can stop us if you don't have permits, right? Uh, and so this is pretty much avoiding all of that stuff, right? This is really more of a one-on-one -on -one sort of stuff, talking to each other, talking to our friends and encourage them to talk to other people. And then start talking to strangers and you'll realize there's really nothing that strange between uh, one another, you know? That we actually have these foundations of values and all we have to do is just push these values forward together, right? Do you think we as, not only as a culture, but also as a people, as a species, have become desensitized to any sort of punishment other than violence? Do you think that's the only thing we fear now? Repercussions, yes, we do fear social ostracism. Social ostracism is our most powerful weapon against uh, any would-be aggressor, 
right? If you want to, anyone would be aggressive that uh, initiate that violence against any member of our community, become socially ostracized, right? Where are you going to go, right? No one's going to house you, feed you, close you. Uh, they'll disconnect you from uh, your Facebook friends, you know? All your friends will defriend you, right? Uh, service companies will pay you $150 to disconnect from you, right? Um, that sort of stuff. Like, where are you going to go, right? But this is not to say, like, let's kick everybody out who doesn't agree with us. This is saying, hey, listen, you have anger issues, let's take some anger management classes, right? Kind of like if you're a bad driver, let's take some driver classes, right? Um, so pretty much just to find different ways that we can solve this solution to get everybody uh, to be a part of society, to be a part of a community uh, that does look out for each other, that does care about each other, right? Um, I don't have any friends today that advocate for slavery, right? Once we've all become abolitionists, that term of meaning kind of goes away, right? Once we've all become freedom activists, that term of meaning will go away too, right? And uh, so pretty much just to, I'm not saying like I want utopia or anything, I want there to be problems, I want there to always be ways we can solve problems and find new problems to solve, but we can't get there on a system of violence, right? Uh, if you look at the state, we keep losing more and more freedoms. You look at the National Defense Authorization Act, and the state keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And people think if you infiltrate the government, you can overturn it. It's like you can't. It's like trying to infiltrate the KKK that's founded on racism and overturning it on racism, right? But a few decades ago, they had millions of members through social ostracism, there's only less than a thousand left today, right? There's less than a thousand. They can't recruit the youth. It's hard to recruit the youth. It's hard to tell people, but let's bring back slavery, right? It's hard to tell women, hey, you shouldn't work, you know, right? So, yeah, you shouldn't have jobs, right? It's like, well, fuck you. Look at Russ Limbaugh, right? Uh, last, I know, I know. Now, right? Right. A few years ago, he could have got away with those sexist remarks, but not today. Not when those values are pushed forward, right? Look what happened with Chick-fil-A, right? Starbucks businesses are also seeing that values are important. And if we push all these values and all these issues together, we can go somewhere, right? We can go somewhere far. I mean, a lot of people argue about this sort of stuff, like, well, if you don't have any government, what's going to happen with this and this and that? It's kind of like when people in the 1800s were arguing for slavery, right? It's like, well, if you're in slavery, where are they going to live? Where are they going to work? Where are they going to eat? Who's going to pick the con? It's like, it doesn't fucking matter. Slavery is wrong and moral and evil and it has to end now. Right? You tell the same farmers, 95% of them were farmers, so listen, 100 years from now, agriculture is not going to look the same. Right? Only 3% of you are still going to be farmers, and we're going to have these huge machines, fossil fuels, and all this you know, technological gadgets and stuff like that. Right? Where we're going, there are no roads. You know? um, so really, just to start talking about freedom, start talking about these issues. Right? I, can't wait. I can't wait for change. You know, change can happen in one day just by talking to people about it, right? You don't have to wait for years. You don't have to, you know, when people go out there in the voting booths, when they close their curtain and pull that lever, punch that chat in, and write their little voice, your voice is not a piece of paper. But when they step out and people say, who do you vote for? People say, oh, that's a personal issue. And then they slap the I voted sticker on their shirt and nobody talks about it again for another four more years, you know? So that's, that's really what this is. is. This is uh, Liberate RVA. Uh, the movement has spread already to New York, to uh, Delaware, just to liberate Newcastle and Delaware, liberate Rochester, New York. Um, but yeah, check us out, uh, liberatervacom That's kind of funny you mentioned the uh, the tags. Yeah. Uh, I was out there in DV, DMV, I was like, nobody better have those words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised though. You'd really yeah, surprised yeah. the tags that people already have. And we have a freedom gathering on the 29th. The uh, Party Liberation Front are going to be coming, uh, performing fire displays and stuff like that for us, too. Fire spinning and all this stuff. So like potlucks and then we'll have like a philosophical discussion about issues in our community and then an after party, right? So are you for more, you know, the absence of government or the change of government or Absolutely. the reinstation? Yeah, no, like no a Ron violence. Paul absence? Uh, Ron Paul absence. Ron Paul is absent. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, pretty much just to, to go away with that, right? We can have rules. We just don't need the rulers, right? We can have a society founded on values, right? We just don't need the coercion, right? Um, give you, it back to the people. Right, give it back. Be our own rulers. Be our own masters, right? I think it's kind of time for that, you know? Uh, the well, government we are willing to trade all of our values for protection right. back and look, in the day, look, but now. Look what and there were times is. when that made sense, almost. Yeah. I mean, not sense, but it was, it seemed logical, even if it wasn't the most logical thing to do. But right. yeah, I think that's, now is not, it's not. Not as much, yeah. because they've gained too much control. <laughs> yeah. Right, and that's what happens, right? One little exception begets more little exceptions, and all of a sudden, like, whoa, An what the fuck? Becomes it becomes that Leviathan we've all read in history books, you know? Um, it's, it's time to, I mean, if people who don't like to smoke marijuana, for example, that's great. You know, we can have communities of people all coexisting with one another, right? You can have an Amish community people and very religious community people, people who like to smoke pot here. We can have all these people intersecting, right? We don't have to force our ideas onto each other and say, no, nobody must smoke pot, right? Nobody must do this, this, and that. It's like, dude, you know, keep your preferences to yourself and stuff. I mean, you can talk to me, persuade me, right? I mean, and that's kind of, I feel like that's where we need to go to, right? Let's talk, start talking about freedom. Let's start talking about these discussions.
Um, and that's what uh, the next Freedom Gathering is going to be about, uh, to, bring, to create a community of people uh, who, who want that, those values, right, for equality, for nonviolence, and uh, to spread it, to go out there, and to all of us draw that moral line together, right? To say enough is enough. Violence ends with all of us. Um, but yeah, so thank you for, uh, for coming and asking me the questions. I'm Cal, by the way. Thank and you I'll for look being up huh? coherent and having good fun. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I went up and talked to some girls at the, um, you know, the Romney booth, the, Repu the young Republicans booth, is what right. it was. And um, she completely shut down when I started trying to talk to her and, ask, and question, why do you believe these things? Why do you think, uh, specifically, the uh, Republican views on women's rights? Why do you think that's okay? Right. And she just shut down. And she was like, well, do you really think that's going to affect you? And I was like, yes, I really do. Um, yeah. And so she and she was like, if you want to talk to women about women's rights, just go talk to the young Democrats. Wow. And she was, and then she, and I asked her why she thought Romney was a good candidate. She was like, just because I'm a Republican doesn't mean I think he's a good candidate. And I'm like, then what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Like, what if, are you're, you if you're not for? willing to talk to people and to stand up for your beliefs instead of shutting down when people argue with you, why are you, why are you here? Right. No, I agree. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not here about shutting down any of this. I'm here about. I'm not saying I know all the answers, right? Yeah. I'm just saying let's. But together we can find out these answers. Together we can talk about. It. I want to get to a better place, right? Morality is about letting go of old ideas and adopting new ideas and getting getting each other to a better place, right? We don't want a utopia, right? We don't. Utopia implies stagnation and perfect society, and I don't want that. I don't want idleness. I want to keep going. I want to get off this rock, you know. <laughs> Uh, I want to go where like no man or no free man and woman and child has ever gone before, you know? Um, yeah, so you guys should come. Uh, the next Freedom Gathering again is on the 29th. It's less than a five minute bike ride from here. It's on um, Randolph on Meadow. So, and I'll definitely check out the, uh, the name uh, you mentioned to me earlier. <laughs> well, thank you very much. No, thank you. It's a pleasure. Have a great day.